This is a tutorial of how to create graphic styles in Adobe Illustrator. And what graphic styles are is they essentially save all the appearance options that you've applied to something like, for example, text. So if you make a whole bunch of different effects and fills and various appearance options like that, a graphic style can save that all so that in the future you can apply it with a single click. Now you don't have to do this, but in the past I made two other tutorials, one for making halftone dots in Illustrator and one for converting type to look 3D in Adobe Illustrator. So if you watch those two before you watch this, it'll show you how to use the appearance panel in more depth and it will give you a whole bunch of different options that you could possibly use to create graphic styles as shown in this tutorial. For this tutorial, I'm gonna make something very simple just to show you how to actually create and then save a graphic style. So I have two different types here. I have them so when I use this one on top, I'll apply the graphic style we made. This bottom one is where I'm gonna actually create the graphic style and then save it so we can apply it later. So a couple windows you want to make sure you have open. If you go to window, make sure appearance is open, make sure graphic styles is open, which is right here on my screen. And also it might be helpful if you have your swatches window open. If you have some swatches you have saved for different colors, stuff like that, it can be quite helpful. Something to note here, if you look at my graphic styles window, usually appearance and graphic styles are on the same little palette window here, just on different tabs. So kind of keep that in mind. So using the selection tool, which is the black arrow, it is V on your keyboard as a shortcut by default. Just click on the type that you want to change. So I have this type right here selected. And what I actually like to do first when I'm applying appearance options is make sure there's no fills or strokes applied to this at all. I want it all to be transparent. The reason I do this, it isn't necessary, but I've noticed sometimes weird things happen when you have a preset fill. Like if you look at my appearance panel right now, you can't see the black fill that's applied. And that can be a little bit of a weird problem if you don't just remove it. So I like to go over here, click on that fill, and then on the bottom here, there's a white box with a red line going diagonally through it that says none. Click that. So make sure there isn't either a stroke. You can click on the stroke to select that, hit none, and make sure fill doesn't have anything and hit none on that. So the type is still here, we just can't see it. In the appearance window, I'm gonna hit this button. It looks like a box that's totally filled in and when you hover over it, it says add new fill. I wanna click that. So this is gonna add a fill as well as a blank stroke. That's totally fine. And here we can select any kind of color we want to apply the fill. I have this preset swatches panel opened up with a bunch of different colors that I wanna use, so I'm gonna use those. But you can either click on the fill and select a color from your standard swatches palette. Mine's all deleted, so there's nothing here. Or you can hold shift and click on that fill and it brings up this color menu where you could use the sliders to create a custom color or even enter in a custom hex code if you wanna do it that way. I'm gonna apply this preset orange color from a palette that I have selected right here. All you have to do to apply that is make sure your fill box is selected. Like I can select stroke just by clicking on it or my fill just by clicking on it. And then you can change this to whatever color you want from inside your swatches palette. But I like this orange color, so I'm gonna keep that. And I'm actually going to create a new fill on top of this fill. I cover this more in depth in the other two tutorials that I have listed in the description of this video. I'll also link them at the end of this video. But think of the appearance panel as basically your layers palette in terms of what's on top and what's on bottom. This fill on top of the fill below it will be on top. So anything that's higher up will be overlapping whatever's beneath it. So on this fill, I'm actually going to click on that and I'm going to apply a blue halftone dot. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit closer here so you can see this better. And I'm actually going to change this orange color to be blue and then change the halftone dot to be orange. I think it might look a little bit better here if I make these look a little bit different. But zoomed out here, we have a very basic start for what we can create into a graphic style. Once again, in those other tutorials, I'll go over this in much greater depth. So if you really want to learn how to create some really cool effects inside Adobe Illustrator, you can go ahead and watch that. And I can also add very quickly in an orange stroke here. So I'm going to hit that, change it to be a little bit wider here by upping the stroke. And I'm actually going to drag the stroke below the fill. So that way the stroke lines, instead of overlapping our fill, are behind it and just add a little bit more depth. I'll make this slightly larger here. So this should be good enough for the purpose of this tutorial, just to show you how you can actually create a graphic style. And something I forgot to mention too, when you actually are working inside your appearance panel, make sure you have that type selected. If the type is not selected and you make changes there, none of them will apply to that type. And that can be a bit frustrating if you accidentally do that. So always make sure the type or whatever object you're working on is selected before you make changes inside the appearance panel. But I'm gonna go over to my graphic styles window by hitting that graphic styles tab. And all you have to do to save this to a graphic style, it's super fast and easy to do is make sure your type or object is selected. And then right here, there's an icon that looks like a page turning. It says new graphic style as you hover over it, just hit that. And that goes ahead and saves this graphic style into our graphic styles window. So I'm gonna click off this type right here and I'm going to scroll up to this other type right here and just select it using my selection tool. It's the black arrow V as the default keyboard shortcut. And I'm gonna use this graphic styles window and just click on this new graphic style I made. 
And as you can see, it very quickly and easily applies what we just did with a single click. So that's a really cool way if you want to make stuff that's really complex and takes a bit of time to make so that in the future, you can go ahead and change it with a click of a button instead of having to recreate all that work you do. And when you're working with something like type, it does stay fully live and easy to edit. So you can go ahead and do that to live type as a way to make type that is still fully editable, but has a really cool appearance to it. To save the graphic styles that you've made, you just have to click on that graphic style. If you want to select multiple graphic styles, you can click on that one. Let's say I had four or five. You just hold down shift and then click on the last one and it will automatically select everything in between. But I just have this one, so I'm going to click on that one. And there's a drop down menu in the upper right hand corner here, where if you click it, you can go to save graphic style library. You just click that. It'll bring up a window where you can save it. You might want to put it in a special folder or something that you can easily access. You can name it whatever you want and then just hit save when you're done. And then in the future, if you ever want to open these graphic styles back up, just go to that same drop down menu, but this time go to open graphic style library and then other library. And then you just have to navigate to whatever folder you saved your graphic style into, click on it and hit open. That should open up a new window with your graphic style in it. And before you do that, if you want to change the name of your graphic style, you can double click it. It'll bring up a name window right here where you can rename this whatever you want. So I can call this halftone one or whatever you happen to think works best for what you created, hit OK. And then when you hover over that inside your graphic styles window, it'll show the name as halftone one. So you can have an easier time remembering what the graphic style is that you created because sometimes these little swatches kind of makes it hard to tell what's going on. But that's it for this video, and I do really recommend you check out the 3D type as well as the halftone dot pattern tutorials I did in the past, as learning those skills will help you make some slightly more complex options where using graphic styles to save it and then reapply it in the future comes in super handy. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please like and favorite. And if you want to see videos like this in the future, please subscribe. I do my best to put out new content just like this every week. Thank you so much for watching.